So see the table under amount of credit later. So we'll dive into some more details in a, in, in a bit here. For additional information about the credit, you can see form 2441 and its instructions available at the irs.gov website. All right, so the 2021 enhancements to dependent care benefits have expired as well. So another kind of item, they changed a lot of things in 2021. They're kind of going back to the, the, the norm that was in place before that whole thing. So the changes to dependent care benefits under the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 have expired. For 2022, the maximum amount that can be excluded from an employee's income through a dependent care assistance program is $5,000. 2500 if married filing separately dependent care benefits are reported on form 2441 line 12 temporary special rules for dependent care fl uh, fl uh, flexible spending arrangements fsas so section 214 of the taxpayer certainty and disaster tax relief act of 2020 provides temporary covid 19 relief for dependent care FSAs. This legislation allows employers to amend their dependent care plan to allow unused amounts to be used in subsequent years. Unused amounts from 2020 and or 2021 are added to the maximum amount of dependent care benefits that are allowed for 2022. So for more information, you can see the line 13 instructions in the instructions for form 2441, notice 2021-15, 2021-10. And there's some more information you could take a look at here to find that information if you want to dive into that in more detail. All right, let's get into the reminders. Personal exemption suspended. So for 2022, you can't claim a personal exemption for yourself, your spouse, or your dependents. So that's been in place for a little while here. You'll recall that uh, there used to be a kind of a, a system where you, when you had a dependent, you would say, what's the major benefit of say having a dependent? One was that you had an exemption, which was kind of like an deduct a deduction for them uh, and an exemption for yourself and so on and so forth. They, in an attempt to simplify the tax code, they basically removed the exemptions and they adjusted the the major benefit would be the credit the credits that would be uh that you'd get for like a dependent for example so taxpayer identification number needed for each qualifying person you must include on line two a form 2441 child and dependent care expenses the name and taxpayer identification number generally the social security number ssn of each qualifying person See the taxpayer identification number under who is a qualified person. We'll talk about that later, but clearly if you're going to be having a credit related to a qualifying child for these expenses, then you're going to have to give them a number related to them because the IRS sees them as a number, typically the social security number. You may have to pay employment taxes. So if you pay someone to come to your home and care for your dependent or, or spouse, you may be a household employer who has to pay employment taxes. So in other words, if you're in a situation, of course, where, where someone is basically working for you in your home, then the question is, well, now are they a contractor? No, it looks more like they're going to be an employee type of situation where you're going to be subject usually to, to payroll, but you might at least have uh, employment taxes uh, with regards to it, right? Social Security and Medicare that you have to deal with in certain situations. So usually you aren't a household employer if the person who cares for your dependent or spouse uh, does so at his or her home or place of business. See, do you have a household employee later? All right, let's get into the introduction. This publication explains the tests you must meet to claim the credit for child and dependent care expenses. It explains how to figure and claim the credit. That's what we want to know. You may be able to claim the credit if you pay someone to care for your dependent who is under age 13. So we have another kind of age test here. You'll recall when we thought about age tests with regards to do can they be claimed as a dependent where we had 19 or 24 if they're a qualifying or if they're a student, for example, do they qualify for the child tax credit? We had an age test of like 17, I believe. And now we've got this age thing here of 13. So you got to keep all these kind of ages uh, in your mind. So who is under age 13 
or for your spouse or dependent who isn't able to care for himself or herself. The credit can be up to 35% of your employment related expenses. To qualify, you must pay these expenses so you and your spouse, if filing jointly, can work or look for work. So that's the general thrust of the, the aim of this credit. What's the aim of the credit? To allow people to work or look for work. So you're now paying for care for the child in order to do that. And so a lot of the rules that we want to think of, we want to think of from that perspective. Why does this rule make sense? You would think they're trying to design the law so that they're giving you a benefit if these expenses are in alignment with allowing you to work or look for work. All right, so this publication also discusses some of the employment tax rules for household employers. Now, if part of what you're doing then uh, in order to work is not taking your child to someone to someone else for care or something like that to allow you to work or search for work, but hiring someone as an as an household employer, then you get into the situation of is the person just like any kind of schedule C kind of thing, which, which is are you hiring this person as an employee or are they an independent contractor is the general kind of idea. If they're working in your home and you have complete control and the, you set the hours and all that kind of stuff, it's looking more and more like they are an employee or a house and, and you're a household employer, which means you may have to deal with uh, the, the payroll tax kind of stuff, social security and Medicare in essence. So dependent care benefits. If you receive any dependent care benefits from your employer during the year, you may be able to exclude all or part of them from your income. You must complete form 2441 part three before you can figure the amount of your credit. See dependent care benefits under how to figure the credit later. So we'll dive into that at a future point. Useful items you may want to see. So you got publications. So the, so some of the gray areas, if, if you want to get into more detail for the research, here are some publications you can find on the IRS website. So you got 501 dependents. So obviously much of this is going to be related to does someone qualify as a dependent so there's some overlap there the standard deduction and uh filing information so then we've got the 926 household employers tax guide so if you're in a situation where now you're solving this problem of being able to work by having care of someone who's a household employer then you can dive into that issue which could deal with social security and medicare and whether you're a household employer form and instructions. So you've got the form uh, 2441 child and dependent care expenses. So obviously you can look up that form and related instructions. Schedule H, form 1040 household employment taxes and W10 dependent care providers identification and uh, certification.